Hi and welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, based on uh, whichever geography you are taking this call from. Uh, today is uh, the first episode of our series of videos that we are going to bring in, wherein uh, we are going to showcase uh, the SNOP application that we we built on Pigment. And uh, in each episode, we are going to talk about one component of uh, you know the function of SNOP. So we begin with target setting. That's today's episode's main agenda. And uh, let me quickly walk through the agenda uh, since we have started talking about it. I'm going to introduce Planofin uh, to you and uh, also then talk a bit about Pigment uh, kind of overview and how a planner's or a user's journey looks like when, when uh, they deploy uh, you know, Pigment in their environment. And also the heavy lifting is going to happen during the live demo. So my name is Kunal Jetwa and I am the Associate Director in Planofin. We are specialized in EPM consulting. Uh, talking about the organization, that's our global presence. Uh, we have our footprints in uh, several geographies headquartered in Dubai and incepted since 2015. Our offerings uh, include definitely uh, Pigment, which is a multidimensional planning application. Uh, we deploy it, we implement it for our customers. Uh, we also provide business and advisory uh, consulting services for uh, functions and domains like FPNA, supply chain, sales planning, budgeting, workforce planning, uh, cost benefit analysis, uh, and all sort of uh, you know functional expertise that is expected. Uh, again, we spoke about the solution implementation. We are EPM uh, partners, and we also offer uh, enablement services to uh, you know as as a support desk right for such applications. And as far as the industry is concerned, uh, we have experience uh, working with clients from aviation, mining and metal, uh, of course, uh, the e-commerce uh, you know, channels, the healthcare sector, as well as retail uh, sectors, right? Now, quickly moving on to pigment, uh, what differentiates pigment uh, from the other applications that's there existing or, you know, have been existing since the traditional time? So. We have many things to talk about pigment, but uh, I would put it uh, in uh, very simple terms. Pigment is extremely flexible. It is uh, highly collaborative and it does not need coding or programming uh, skills from the users. It's totally owned by business and it absolutely reduces your planning cycle time and brings in quick time to value. Uh, moreover, it's uh, pretty adaptive uh, and you're going to see a lot of features uh, on the fly when we move ahead. Uh, and, and conduct the live demo, right? It's it's intuitive, uh, great presence, uh, you know, from the platform perspective, extremely uh, interactive and collaborative. So uh, on the screen, we see different chunks of functions. Uh, let's say this represents not just an SNOP, but various other functions of planning uh, within an organization. So you can have uh, them connected together. You can collaborate with different users and there is always a synergy between, uh, in between your workforce. Uh, planning together. Um, far as uh, the environment, uh, the platform environment is concerned, you actually have a workspace which is like a small piece of your cloud. Since this is a software as a service, a SaaS application, uh, you know, hosted on cloud, you will have your own workspace uh, completely secured, and you're going to have your applications. Now, applications will uh, represent your business function. You will have a revenue planning application, workforce planning, FPNA, and so on and so forth. Now, on the application, you will have boards, uh, which are basically built with uh, modeled blocks. Now, these blocks will be multidimensional capability uh, of board having different visuals uh, and uh, state of the art, uh, you know, environment. Uh, it will help all the pieces of your functions and your activities, uh, you know, stay in contact and connected throughout. As far as the journey of a planner uh, is concerned, a user will actually be able to perform planning and analytics in Pigment with, uh, let's say, uh, starting with data synchronization. Uh, native in integrators are available in Pigment. You can have it from multiple variable source systems. Uh, and also there are API hooks available, uh, which can help you to bring the data and even push it out uh, using the export options. We also have a very uh, simple low-code, no-code, uh, you know, formula engine, uh, it is uh, even, uh, I would say it is so adaptive that you 
will have an option of name based or name object based kind of an environment wherein you don't have to write the formulas within cells uh, it's it's very efficiently handled by uh, pigment uh, you know modeling blocks then once you have your application ready you have a board set up you will empower your team uh, with collaborative features planning features top down bottom up uh, even you can run time series uh, in statistics uh, if you if you model that accordingly and then the best part is uh, you know course correction review your scenarios make better decisions and informed decisions and keep trying to uh, you know avoid uh, you know deviations variances and always uh, stay on top of your plan so today we are going to look at uh, our first uh, use case from the SNOP application uh, that we have built which is target setting and the live demonstration is about to start so just fasten your seat belts roll up your sleeves and let me take you uh, to the product too uh, with a detailed functional explanation of how a user's life uh, will be while using pigment after deployment and uh, conducting or performing uh, target setting exercises all right so we are on pigment this is our application uh, which is built for target setting it's the first component of our snop end-to-end -end application so as we know that there are going to be several episodes and in each episode we are going to talk about one uh, important piece of uh, or i would say one important function of snop planning right so uh, target setting as we spoke about it's a very crucial thing it, it actually sets the stage for the business organization to drive uh, the operations and it becomes a benchmark for for the organization right so when everyone wants to put their efforts in meeting the targets definitely we need collaboration and pigment offers amazing flexibility and a lot of collaboration features we would see how easily and how flexibly at the same time how intuitively you can actually do your planning so we have this application which is broken down into three important areas which is performance review and then we move into target planning and reporting and analysis so performance review is a is a phase wherein let's say we have completed our uh, you know year end and uh, we want to see how have we performed uh, in the previous period that is last year and just for the ease of this uh, demonstration we have considered the year 2022 as our last year so we're going to do the planning after we look at our performance for the last year and the planning will not be a short term or an annual planning in fact i would put it in this way we can easily plan for the next three years or even more periods but for this example we have considered three years long-term planning right so we do planning we will look at top-down approaches we will look at bottom-up approaches we will also look at uh, you know planning for the best outcome base outcome or probably worst outcome so there's a lot of outcome based planning that we can we can uh, look at today and uh, of course there is an approval workflow that will pass on and after all the targets are being set definitely someone has to approve it right and uh, we will then proceed with how our provisional uh, you know income statement uh, balance sheet and uh, cash flow looks like right especially the provisional pnl and balance sheet is something that we want we'd be more interested to look at and uh, now it's time for me to actually wear the first hat of a sales VP. So let me click this and I would see that there are three boards which uh, are created that will help me to look at my revenue performance in total. Then we will get into the channel level revenue performance because I am selling the products uh, through various uh, sales channels. And then I would be interested to see how my products and customers are performing, right? So based on some ranking, uh, you know calculations I would look at top five products and top five customers who are giving me the maximum revenue so let me click on the board revenue performance all right so you must be very familiar with this uh, this particular uh, you know section of slicing and dicing because this is very commonly used for data analytics uh, we are doing the context based selection and filtering it out so it's very intuitively done here you can actually select uh, any of the hierarchies uh, within that specific list. So we have a region hierarchy here. I can look at my region, slice and dice uh, the entire uh, you know board and look at the values. So the interesting piece is as a VP, I'm interested to see uh, what's my revenue broken down by region. 
and uh, let's say I want to look at how my revenue is broken down by not just region but by countries or cities let's say countries so it's very easy instead of you know uh, creating a new visual or creating a new calculation pigment will help me to just click on North America let's say I want to see uh, you know the revenue drilling down from North America to a specific uh, country within North America that's how easy it is right and now uh, I probably want to see how all the countries are looking like so I'll select all the regions that's my revenue for all the countries that I'm selling my products in right and now I want to do a quick sort so I want to click on sort very intuitively I can select a matrix by country I want to sort it in descending so of course I would see that United States, uh, you know, is contributing maximum to my uh, to my revenue, and so on and so forth. So that's how easy I can actually play with my data, play with my visuals, right? I don't need uh, any support from IT or you know any any uh, special academic qualification to do it. It is as easy as a couple of clicks, and here we have all the information on the fingertips. Now the other interesting piece that I would be interested uh, to see is my net sales. Now look at my net sales. Uh, I can actually drill down and expand it by all dimensions. So I have got North America. My net sales is basically revenue minus my cost for advertising and promotions. It is a very simple calculation that I'm using for this demo. But uh, you know what I want to actually not look at uh, the information in this manner. I may want to look at it in a different manner. So what would I do is I would go to Pivot and Pivot is a very powerful feature that I have uh, in Pigment, right? Uh, instead of looking at uh, countries by region, I will only select uh, maybe countries or let's get rid of countries also. So I've got a uh, total for all the countries, but I have uh, them in quarters, right? Why don't I bring a nice uh, aggregator here? So I will choose my aggregator and I will say sum it all. All right. So uh, this is my revenue, which is uh, 1.3 billion. Uh, and I want to actually try and see for the next three years, if I have some percentage of increase, what should be my baseline, right? So I can actually do it in a different way altogether by bringing, let's say I'm comfortable with uh, an Excel or a spreadsheet kind of an environment, right? So we have a direct toggle to switch this view and bring in spreadsheet kind of an environment. Right, let me close the configure data option of the pivot. Now, this is actually uh, inside, it is natively hubbed inside uh, pigment. And I now can actually type in my formulas here, right? All right. Copy them, paste them across. Now I want to figure out how much uh, should I be planning for, uh, you know, year on year for the next three years. So let me just say if I have a 10% increase, I might end up with something like 1.4 billion, right? So let me say 1.5 billion a year. So I want to have 4.5 billion in the next three years. This is something that I may uh, wish to have as my base outcome, right? So I will just remove all this, right? Uh, reset this and perhaps get rid of this. Now, I'm just thinking as a VP that I may end up doing 1.5 billion. Let's say for the next three years, I will end up doing 4.5 billion. Let me target something for 4.5 billion spread across three years. So this is something that I'm going to keep in mind when I'm going to set my target, right? Now, moving ahead, uh, we're going to look at channel performance. I've been selling my products uh, throughout the geography uh, and uh, through various channels. So I have got an e-commerce channel distribution as well as institution sales. And how would I be interested, uh, you know, to look at uh, how is my sale for e-commerce happening on a month-on-month -month basis, right? So here I have got a quarter uh, dissection, right? This is the time horizon that I'm selecting. So I want to change it from quarter to time, uh, quarter time to, let's say, a monthly uh, time horizon. All I need to do is I can actually again use the powerful feature of pivot. I can add 
my month and that's how easily I can actually get uh, you know the change of my data view and look at the field so I'm going to reset this I'm going to close this and move ahead how about looking at my product and customer performance I've got some very good customers whom I have been selling my products uh, you know over the last year and I can see that it's very easy to find out the contribution and these formulas are you know excel like or spreadsheet like formula but the best part about these formulas would be their name object base and that means you don't have to actually write formulas for each cell you have it once you name that specific uh, kpi and then you can call and refer it throughout uh, the entire application and even share with different applications so it eliminates the need for creating formulas for every user if the user is going to share the same formula they can do it now that's the power of this technology right what i see here is i can see that the contribution for each product by period and at the same time i see some conditional formatting here that clearly visible that i have been conditionally formatting for something which is below five percent right but it's not sorted why don't i sort this i'll right click and i'll quickly sort it descending on the fly right so all these features are very intuitive uh, and they help me to look at my data from different perspectives and uh, now it's time for me to actually go ahead and see how's my human resource and admin department looks like so i'm going to change my change my hat and uh, i'm going to look at some of the important kpis or calculations or i would say some costs of uh, hr and admin now i have some rent and utilities office supplies salaries and headcount numbers right and at the same time, I have a nice uh, looking administration cost uh, pie and also the department headcount, which is sorted based on maximum headcounts for the department. Now, uh, what's interesting for me to understand is uh, whether I may want to increase any headcount. Yes, I may increase a headcount and I would definitely want to increase a headcount, but that's something that I might want to do it when I'm planning my target, right? I'm setting my target. But again, uh, let's go back to the other uh, you know processes and uh, let me touch the operation cost summary so my operation cost is mostly driven by purchase cost and transportation cost right and uh, i can see how my uh, you know countries uh, are are spending on purchase how my countries are spending on transportation it is as easy as uh, you know having your information directly thrown from the system or your source system to this application and this brings me to a very important point right uh, we have something called as import scheduling which is basically an integration so how do you manage your integrations it's very straightforward uh, pigment has got native integration and there are more than 25 different data sources which can directly be connected to pigment and uh, it, it makes uh, the information flow very seamless and avoids or eliminates the need for manually bringing in data in the system. Of course, we do have spreadsheet as one of the source, uh, you know, uh, integrator. Uh, but otherwise, we have got uh, a whole lot of uh, suite of uh, data sources which can directly connect your source data inside Pigment. And at the same time, it's not necessary for you to only look at one specific source data and connect with pigment you can have variable sources of data and connect with one application or a hub of multiple application that's absolutely possible now i'm going to look at uh, some of the financial ratios wearing the hat of a cfo this is a very difficult hat to wear to be very honest but let me just look at how my 2022 looks like when it comes to my financial uh, calculations or financial ratios so of course i've got a, i've got some good growth over last year uh, last to last year, I mean, and de definitely I've got some nice net profit here. I have got a headcount uh, and customer count calculation also. So my performance summary looks good. There are some uh, KPIs that I am interested as a CFO to look at. Let's say a very interesting piece would be uh, how is my expenditure been on social uh, responsibilities from the corporate and. Uh, Given uh, this, uh, we can also look at how my profit and loss statement looks like, right? So we can have a profit and loss statement, other financial statements, all reported 
uh, and the interesting part is as a CFO probably I may tell my uh, uh, my FPNA manager to check whether the data is accurately being fetched from the source so all we need to do is right click and find out the data directly through the source so let's drill this so we have uh, 1.34 billion and uh, this is the data that is coming in from the source system I want to look at so this is an integer or a whole number right so I want to look at uh, the values in million all I need to do is format this move the scaling to million 1.342 billions this is absolutely matching I'll just close this and the data is matching right now it's time for me to dirty my hands and do some target setting so I'm going to change my hat quickly before the target setting starts I'm going to become a central planning administrator and I'm going to fix some roles and responsibilities quickly so we're not we're not doing something uh, here I would say uh, there is a list that helps us to add any employees you can create uh, we were talking about in case if we want to add a number of uh, headcount in the new year right we can actually do it and we can set the budgets uh, for the new headcount and budget is something that we are going to discuss in the next episode so I'll keep this uh, as a surprise uh, act for our upcoming episode on budgeting which is connected to the same application right but uh, intuitively you can actually add any list members on the fly your list members could be your regions your countries your your employees your products it's absolutely flexible and intuitive now this is a nice way to actually show how your responsibility as uh, the employee of the organization uh, you know how, how does it look like so especially there are KPIs which are connected from employees to their managers to their departmental heads and to the management so we are looking at management level uh, responsibility by functional role right and you can see that there are these boolean checks right and these uh, represent that let's say for CSR expense the responsibility is with CEO so he is the one he or she is the one who would decide what should be the CSR expense of course that goes through uh, the radar of CFO and there could be discussions collaborations happening on that but overall what we are trying to show here is how easily you can create such kind of uh, you know beautiful visuals even though they are tabular you can still know who's responsible for what right out of all the KPIs uh, with respect to the revenue KPIs or the cost KPIs now moving ahead as a central planning administrator uh, I would be interested to create a target version right so my target version uh, as I mentioned I just closed my actuals for 2022 I want to target for the year 23 24 and 25 so I want to keep the start date of uh, my target which is for January 2023 and then I want to add 36 periods here since it is in months instantly i am able to see that my uh, target version is active now i have got a base uh, you know outcome and recon that we spoke about 4.5 billion that could be our base right as a sales vp i decided that it's not and it's not a bad idea to have 4.5 billion uh, as a cumulative target or, a, or an aggregated target for the next three years so i'm going to add 4.5 billion here now just one outcome may not be sufficient for me to plan right so i probably may have to add a few more outcomes so i can just put the outcome name here and put the value here but we have a very good option a very powerful feature of pre-filling the values using this option so i'm going to choose base and pre-fill the values from base let me call this as best and best could be maybe 50 million right and now i'm going to add one more item and call it worst worst could be maybe 35 million all right so three outcomes are ready now let's move ahead with uh, the next piece of uh, our target planning activity so we're going to click on target review this is the first exercise that i'm going to conduct now as a CEO so now I have changed my hat to a CEO but 
I'm going to invite many people in this discussion and I don't need them to be physically present because this is a technology which is based on cloud. So you just need a login and a password and the workspace access and you are able to view this based on the access allowed by your administrator, right? Now, when I see my target for the year 23, 24 and 25 all said here see this is the base best and worst uh, values that we had fed it right now how am i going to distribute let's say 4.5 billion in the next three years so the distribution total is 100 percent and it always has to be 100 percent it cannot breach else we will have a wrong value for calculation and a wrong value for input but let's say i end up doing some manual error so i'm going to say 29 now you see that validation tells me that conditionally this is incorrect and it turns into a red color. But will this be a sufficient uh, notification or an alert for me? I don't think so. So I have an alert which comes through notification. This is an automated notification that hits my notification box. At the same time, it also hits my inbox. So here it clearly states, hi, this is me. And the validation has failed is now so and so. So very efficiently we are being communicated directly by the system and this automation workflow is supported throughout the application as and when we need them to test whether there is an uh, incorrect activity of planning which has happened or any manual error which has happened with respect to some booleans that we, we established right so i will want to go back to the previous value all i can do is i can just uh, activate or click this cell and say control z which will be undoing this or i can use the undo option here so let me use the option here at the same time since we are on this page there are many fields which can be edited but how do i come to know whether the fields are editable right we have something called as a visual hints here i'm going to activate this and now i can see the fields which i can edit right so i've got a purchase uh, contribution which is basically telling me that 29 percent of my revenue goes for purchase 22% uh, 2% goes for transportation and so on and so forth there are so many components which are available here and all these components definitely take some share as an expense from the revenue that hits my top line and slowly it starts moving to the bottom line right the more i do this the more uh, you know worse will be my bottom line but at the same time i need to be a little realistic so this is a top down approach for the entire organization that can be used uh, in order to plan your targets right now you see that my base case with 4.5 billion for fy23 i am minus 5% negative uh, fy24 year over year i am 16% positive and then i am 19% positive Will I be happy with this? May or may not be. So this is something that I might end up checking eventually. You know, once I freeze or once I freeze the target, right? Now, other aspects would be to look at uh, my purchase percentage. Right now, my purchase value for base is thirteen o five. That is one point three million billion. And I want to see whether my calculation is flowing correctly. So I'm going to right click this and say add a calculated item right i'm not doing any programming or coding i'm just putting a simple test so i'm going to find out the ratio of, of purchase right right and i'm going to say all right so we have a variance or deviation or a ratio calculation existing automatically it will create the calculation so i'm going to say ratio of purchase over revenue and i'll say apply that's it of course we have got some uh, formatting to take care of so i'll right click format and for this only my selection i'm going to say clear the format at the same time i'm going to say add percentage right voila so my calculation being from coming from simulation is absolutely correct because i said 29 percent uh, of my revenue should be considered as purchase so that's that's uh, working perfectly and now I'm going to just remove this. I don't want to see this. These are some ad hoc analysis that I can do on the fly without the need of any coding or programming skills, right? Now, I'm good with this. I'll just, uh, you know, uh, bring back uh, or turn off the visual hints. So that's very interesting uh, summary for me. I want to see my revenue 
and uh, break it down by probability region. Nice. Let's expand this. And I want to look at my cost. Break down by cost center type. Voila. I'm able to see my revenue by region, my cost, by uh, the cost components. Amazing. Let me just reset this, close this, and move ahead. We'll have to wear the sales VP hat once again, right? So let me go to sales and revenue expenses. Now let's uh, do a bit of top down planning here, right? So we are on our base outcome, which tells me that my final target for 2023 is going to be 1.2 billion. Now, I'm okay with uh, how North America is performing, so I'll just hold it. And uh, I feel that there is a lot of potential in Europe, definitely. So I'm going to say Europe can actually improve uh, a bit. So let me add the option of overwrite quickly. I want to overwrite this uh, value and make it 450 million. So you would see that uh, pigment has actually respected uh, my main target as well as held uh, North America's target. But whatever changes I made in Europe has been adjusted with Asia. Now, definitely a change uh, in Europe, like increase of this value in Europe is going to make my sales manager or my country manager a bit worried, right? So I want to actually get in touch with my country sales manager, but why don't I use my collaboration feature? So I can simply write a comment at the cell level and I can call my sales manager or country manager. Since I discussed with him about this change, so he shouldn't be shocked looking at this value. Right? Our value seems to be a little late here. So target that we discussed. I'll post this. Now, Anurag, my sales or country manager is going to receive this as a notification at the same time, uh, an email in the inbox, right? So I'll just close this. Now, since I'm talking about different country managers, they should have access only uh, for their respective countries that they handle, right? So let me first allocate this value uh, to all the countries and now I see all the countries as a VP but let's say if Anurag is uh, is uh, you know logged into this application how would Anurag be able to see this so I'm going to call him here impersonate myself as Anurag and you would see that Anurag is only able to see Germany and France which is Europe right and he should also be able to see the conversation which was tagged to him so I'll just remove the impersonation feature. Disable it, I mean. So that means I am able to uh, have the access for my users based on their roles and responsibilities. This is a very powerful and must-to-have auditable feature, right? Now, I'm okay with uh, how, how my target looks like. I just want to have an approval. So as a VP, I'll go ahead and approve the base target. The moment I approve the base target, Throughout all the four quarters of 2023, my target is allocated and a very nice uh, country level visualization, which is a stacked bar chart throughout the period 2023 is appearing on my screen. Right Now, similarly, I have already uh, taken care of the advertisement and promotion cost. It has been uh, approved and all the necessary uh, you know, targets are being set. But the most important uh, you know, information is about how do we plan uh, the social impact or the CSR expenses, right? So CSR expense is something that uh, becomes a, a kind of a pledge the companies take that they are going to give it back to the society. So of course, we have uh, already taken care of the top down and bottom up uh, plans uh, for individual countries. But what if my CSR a initiative uh, you know has to increase uh, i probably want to go uh, ahead and create another initiative or i want to invest in another initiative so i am for all regions i'm looking at uh, my csr activities this is the expense allocation uh, that i'm going to you know uh, put 
uh, from my CSR initiatives. So uh, I can do some bottom up planning here quickly. So I have made some adjustments in India. I want to invest more, uh, you know, spend more on the CSR activities, but also some in US. Let's say I want to uh, override this and I want to say, let me add three more millions in the United States. So why don't I add some initiative here, foster homes expenses right expense allocation we'll look at the allocation later we'll have to adjust it uh, this is one initiative that we just added let me expand it right so this allocation from my csr initiative is uh, coming to 100 percent i might want to adjust this and say 20 percent here and 10 percent here it'll end up being 100 percent that's perfect I can actually choose to have an automated workflow here that tells me if I'm breaching my limits or if I'm putting a value which is beyond a specific number. That's fine. We've already seen that. So I'm not repeating that exercise. But now I want to actually go ahead and approve this. So in the moment I approve it, I would see that all my visuals will appear and tell me exactly how much I'm going to spend uh, in just a click, right? So as a, a CEO, since this is my responsibility, I can also you know, plan something, discuss it with my CFO and, uh, and approve it. Now, uh, discussions will definitely continue to happen through uh, you know, in native collaboration features uh, that's absolutely seamless and possible. Now, as a CFO, I'm going to actually now wear the hat of a CFO. I wish to check how my interest tax and debt management uh, can be taken care of, right? So I need to have some target. Of course, that's a very difficult piece, but let's say I'm I'm a more experienced CFO. I probably end up uh, reading a lot and doing a lot of research on the macroeconomic factors and, and things that are happening throughout the globe. So I'm a bit informed and I want to make the best use of this experience or make the best use of my habit of being informed, right? Uh, so let me just quickly turn uh, the visual hints and this is uh, based on region right and now my tax uh, should be based on country right interestingly i can choose how my short term interest uh, is going to look like so i'm as as a business organization i'm going to definitely borrow some you know some funds uh, from the institutions from banks so i need to understand what if my short term interest uh, is going to increase or decrease a bit so how would it, how would it look like uh, let me let me quickly say you know short term interest rate let's say i'm having 15% increase for 23, 17 in 24, and 18 in 25. Similarly, turn debt probably is going to decrease. Let's say uh, five here. Uh, let's say six here, and let's let's retain eight here. Tax rate by country. Uh, maybe there is some, you know, you know, budget that is rolling up, and uh, we end up having higher tax rates for specific countries. So we are looking at United States right now. Uh, the short term interest is for region term debt is for region but taxes by country so let's say united states uh, as a country would be ending up uh, giving some discounts in or let's say some benefits in tax rates for the year 23 but 24 and 25 i am anticipating that it will actually go beyond this so 18 in 24 and probably 20 in 25 right so how would my overall tax uh, you know uh, look like right so i have a very interesting comparison uh, chart here and uh, that's how i can i can look at uh, how uh, the, you know the different kinds of uh, simulations that i perform how do they match how do they fare to each other and let me turn off the visual hints quickly i'm going to now say all right i do have definitely different outcomes but i'm you know i'm sticking to my base outcome because that's something that is more realistic for me of course throughout the year i might end up doing rolling uh, target settings or let's say rolling focus not just the target settings i might change my outcome at that point of time but in order to freeze this target i need to you know select uh, one of the target outcomes right and i would be very happy to go with base right since i am wearing a hat of uh, a cfo right now and i might have some conservative feeling uh, so let me go with base right now now after this i 
all I have is uh, the provisional PNL. So we have completed the review first. We have uh, done our planning uh, after the central administration uh, administration support helped us to create a version. Uh, we were able to also uh, do some bottom up analysis uh, and planning, some top down planning, and we were also able to you know comment with our and collaborate with our uh, you know other stakeholders and other team members. We were also able to do some ad hoc analysis quickly on the fly using formatting, pivoting, aggregations, and uh, you know calculated item features. And uh, all of this, uh, you know, stays on the cloud and, you know, we can concurrently do these activities, we can concurrently plan together, we can collaborate it, and it's very flexible and fast. But now after all this, how would, as a company, how would my PNL, how would my provisional balance sheet look like? So after setting the target, all I'm interested as a CFO or as a CEO, all I'm interested is to look at my final dollar value, right? So with this, we can actually project how my provisional uh, financials look like. Interestingly, it supports all the features that we spoke about. We can drill down. We can, uh, you know, connect with different uh, breakdown or, or, you know, hierarchies that we spoke about. Uh, so that's exactly how my uh, PNL is broken down in a nice waterfall visual. Uh, nice tabulation and these are some intuitive ways of handling uh, the reporting and and these are also you know uh, downloaded so you can export it to a pdf uh, you can even download uh, the grids into uh, you know csvs or xlsx right and just for our uh, quick understanding we have got all of this approved except for salaries so now i think as an hr we need to wear a hat and get it approved quickly so why don't we do that? That's our general admin. Okay, all the calculations done, top down and bottom up. Probably we are good. And salaries, something that we did not approve. So we were able to check this quickly. And that's the purpose of keeping one specific outcome not approved because at any given point of time, if our outcomes are not approved or if our uh, workflows are not approved completely, then we may not be able to proceed further with the reporting or provisional reporting. So that's what uh, you know we wanted to discuss and showcase. Now, if we see approved salary, also uh, is approved, right? All right. So with this, we come to an end of uh, today's session. Uh, I'm sure this was uh, a little informative and also interesting. Uh, for all of you watching this uh, episode and uh, as we mentioned that this is the first episode of the series of SNOP uh, components we have built an application uh, powered by pigment and we have brought in a lot of components together to make an end-to-end -end and seamless uh, sales and operations planning app uh, this is the first episode for target setting the next episode is going to be on budgeting and uh, we're going to do some interesting uh, planning exercises uh, when we look at the budgeting app. So keep watching this space for more. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye.